Well, we have to talk about some wrestling news here, as always. And By the way, did you see, did you see the, the other Dave Meltzer re- uh, interviewed Stephanie? I did see that. Yeah. That was yeah, quite though. the deal. Stephanie McMahon interviewed by Dave Meltzer, yeah, but, but not this Dave, Dave Meltzer. But the other Dave Meltzer, yeah, the the guy, the sports agent, yeah, who's... I, I mean, I know him, you know, but we, we sometimes correspond. But, um, yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, which is... It's, it's, it's actually kind of funny because of a couple things, because... Um, you know, like, if you listen to the interview, she pretty much says everything that we say WWE should do. And she says, like, this is what we do. But they don't do any of it. What are you talking about? What does All she the say they should do? Get rid of her father? Well, no, they didn't say that, but I mean, no, just like, it's all about, it's not about, it's all about building stars. It's a star driven industry. You have to make stars. You have to constantly make new stars. Um, you, you know, that's pretty much what she said. You know, and and that's it. It's always been, always will be. I mean, people say it's the brand, but it didn't. It's the it's it's the ability to make stars. She said it, um, and the idea that you have to listen to the fans. And she even was almost sort of defensive about. It. She was like, you know, I mean, people say we don't listen to the fans, but we do. We really do listen to the fans. No, they don't. Well, I can't bear to listen to this, Dave. Well, you should listen to the interview. But it I mean, will lead us to a discussion of the lowest raw ratings of all time. After all this listening to the fans and making new stars, yeah, set new records across yeah, the board on Monday. Yeah, Monday was the lowest. You know, they, I, I remember two weeks ago when I told you that they were going to do 1.5 million, except they had that sudden influx of women uh, yes. viewers. So it was like this was going to happen. It was just like this was the week where you didn't, the men were back down again and you didn't have the sudden influx of women uh, viewers. Um, so. It was it was on its way to happening. It wasn't like this happened out of nowhere, um, you know. And obviously, it's been building to this, and it will go lower, you know, in time. Um, you know, who knows when? It won't be next week. Uh, next week will be up because of the coming off the pay per view. But yeah, it's uh, it's at a lower level. You know, and the thing is, is it isn't so much. Well, I mean, it is so much that they hit an all time low. That's always something significant, but. They, their previous all-time low was a point four six, and they went to a point four one. So that's like over a ten percent drop from the previous all-time low. And that previous all-time low was months ago when they were not in the Thunderdome, which you know boosted their rating. So it was, um, it was a, you know, not it was it was a ridiculously low number. I mean, one that is an unforeseen low number, you know, the kind of like that you probably weren't going to get until probably after WrestleMania next year, but you already got it now. So, um, I mean, there's there's factors. I mean, because the thing also on the show that was so significant about this about this, the show is that, like, I thought that, like, the third hour was going to do an all time record low. I know you thought the whole show would do a, an all time record low and it did. Um, but. It wasn't like just people tuned out the show. I mean, they, they didn't tune out at any faster clip than any other week. They didn't tune in in the first place. So it wasn't like The Miz turned them off or that terrible Bray Wyatt segment turned them off. They weren't even watching those segments, you know, to, to begin with. To, to leave. I mean, they left at a slower rate than usual because they started at a... People just didn't decide to watch the show. I mean, whatever it was. What was advertised ahead of time on the show? They advertised a couple things. Actually, they advertised a lot. I don't have it in front of me, but I think they had like five things advertised or something like that. They had a couple things advertised. Um, I'm trying to remember what what they said ahead of time. They had AJ and Seamus, I knew ahead of time. Um, Hold on. I got. Let me just look at the... The stuff here, the Bray Wyatt um, uh, taking his puppets on that tour, that was advertised ahead of time because I knew that going in. And that was clearly not, you know, something that anyone cared about. Um, the uh, I think the six-man tag with uh, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Jeff Hardy against um, the Hurt Business, I knew that ahead of time. Lana and Nia Jax, we knew that, we knew that a couple days ahead of time. Um I mean, they didn't tell us about Mason Ricochet or Dana Brooke and Shayna Baszler, but I don't know that any of those were were going to make a difference. So basically, everything they they told you a, a lot about the show and the the AJ and um, 
Was the AJ and uh, Drew McIntyre thing at the end, was that advertised at any time? I don't even remember. I, I don't think so. Okay, well. Because I was matter. caught completely off guard, but that doesn't mean it wasn't. But yeah. I do not remember that one being advertised. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a pretty monumental week because um, there's a chance. I, I wouldn't say a good chance, but there's, a ch- there's absolutely a chance that uh, AEW be the highest rated wrestling show of the week because it will beat SmackDown. Um, and it may beat Raw. I mean, if the last two weeks of AEW beat this week of Raw, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will this week. Um, it, it will probably be close, though. Um, maybe not, but, um, you know, it just depends. Because this is an interesting week for AEW, too, because we'll find out, like, how much of the last couple of weeks was uh, just a, a hot shot couple of weeks and how much is a legitimate increase in interest and and no one knows the answer because the novelty of sting is is now over now it's going to be can, can sting draw you know and he was only in for like a minute tonight anyway um but it's basically where is the product right now and you had i mean you had a lot of the top guys there you didn't have moxley young bucks weren't really there i mean they were in the crowd but they didn't wrestle but you did have jericho in a 12 person tag you did have omega in a singles match at the end um, a lot of other stuff that was, you know, they, they definitely were were building new talent tonight. So, um, and when you do that, you know, you're not going to get as big a rating as when you load it up. And, but you have to do that too, or else, because you keep playing the pat hand game. And, um, yeah, you can do a better rating this week, but um, in the long run, you're not going to be doing as good. So, um, I don't know what will happen. We'll know tomorrow. But, um, well, I do have a stat for you. It was two years ago. This week, that Vince and yeah. Hunter and Vin- Stephanie came out on TV and they said, essentially, this sucks, we're sorry, we're going to do better, we're going to listen to the fans, we're going to do what you want, and here we are two years later. That show did 2.5 million viewers, this show 1.5 million viewers. That's a scary drop in two years, it's, Especially after promising they were going to turn it around and listen to everybody and do what they... Yeah. Listen to the fans, as Stephanie said to the other Dave Meltzer. Yeah, but, hell you know, of a job the, they did. Yeah, but the thing also is, is like when we talk about that, the the the, the just the pure, pure number drop. I mean, the pure number drop is significant, but other people have had pure number drops like that. But the the key number drops are far worse because it's an aging audience. It's not like like if you were losing audience but they were all older people and you were maintaining your younger audience i mean it's 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 still not good to lose audience but it's not as bad but the point is is they're losing like they're losing like under 35 at a much faster rate than they're losing you know the 50 plus i mean the 50 plus is the audience that they're i mean they're losing every audience but the 50 plus is the one that they're maintaining the most and so the when you look at just the pure number ratings drop it really doesn't give you the feel you know what i mean like cuz every week when i do the thing um you know i mean let me let me um hold on i actually would have this here um so let me just get where was this compared to last year um hold on Um, as compared to last year, the, the where is this? Um, hold on. Um, it was down twenty six percent in viewers. Okay, so that's you know that's not particularly good but there have been weeks that it was down 30 percent <laughs> that is um, not particularly good but they were down 32 percent in 1849 and 48 percent in 1834 so 18 to 34 they were almost cut in half and this is only in a year this is not like five years where everybody's down a lot this is one year so i mean that's the, the you know that's the scary one um is that you know the younger the the younger the audience the more they're losing um, and it's not like, you know, well, you know, people are, you know, whatever. There's 
people are going to video games. We may have had video games a year ago. I'm not particularly sure that we did, but I presume we did. And I presume that I Netflix can confirm is, we had video games last okay. year. Okay, I can pres I, I presume that Netflix and Hulu existed a year ago, yes, and that that correct. people had computers and watched things on YouTube one year ago. I'm not sure of any of this, of course. And I can presume there may have been NFL football a year ago too. Maybe I not. was told that there was NFL this week starting for the first time. There was an NFL game against them for the first time this Monday. Yes, yes. I know. And it was a good game, too. The, that know, has never happened. There's never been a good NFL game going yeah. up against Raw. I mean, that, you know, the, you know, I mean, like, I, I guess, I mean, it's like, look, I mean, there's always there's always lists of excuses. Um, and there were boy, did we hear them, you know, after this one. But um, I mean, the. You know, here here's the thing. It 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 is the idea that the last two weeks of AEW beat this week of Raw is is pretty staggering because it's like this is about nine months ahead of schedule, so to speak. If everything had gone badly for WWE, um, those lines were supposed to intersect in August of next year, not in um, early December of this year. And so we're like, these things are happening ahead of schedule. And uh, I mean, Vince is going to have to react in some way. Um, I don't know what his reaction will be. I mean, I suppose you could call up. I mean, there's 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 people out there, you know, you don't always call up Bill Goldberg. You can always call up The Undertaker, but none of that's going to matter because it's not going to th those those are you know going back in time will will never solve the problem. Um, I mean, that part of the problem is always going back in time. Um, they can call up CM Punk, um, which is interesting because CM Punk is right now, CM Punk right now is in a real good position. I mean, you know, I guess it was inevitable that he would be at some point because there's a wrestling war going on, but he's in a, you know, if he wants to do anything and doesn't want to be stubborn and just say, I'm never going to, and, and he's talked to, you know, like the last interview he did, he didn't rule out like, like a, a couple of years ago where it's like, I'm never coming back. It was, you know, he kind of even acted like he was interested in AEW, which I'm sure if he had, uh, when they were talking to him a couple of years ago, if he had goggles where he could see the future, I would almost bet money he'd, he'd have been in AEW from day one, um, wanting to be on that ride. But he didn't have those goggles, and he didn't think, you know, I think he had no confidence that they'd be able, he didn't want to, be on a, he didn't want to lose to Vince, probably. And now, all of a sudden, you know, things have changed. But, um, you know, I mean, it's it's um, I, mean, I don't know. It's 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 a real monumental. It's a real it's a real monumental period from from the WWE standpoint and from an AEW standpoint, too, as far as where everything's going. And, um, yeah, uh, it's it's just hard to believe it happened. It's not hard to believe it was going to happen. But it's hard to believe it happened this soon. And um, if by whatever, if it happens again, like in the, in the sense of if AEW does beat a point four one this week, and there's chance, like I don't expect it, but there's absolutely, like, I absolutely can't say because they did the last two weeks. Um, if they do beat that, that's uh, really concerning because that's not a hot shot. I mean, that's this is a show. This was this was anything but a show designed to get big ratings. This was a show designed to build the future and and to um you know set up you know uh set up new programs and to expose new guys and things like that and um i mean as far as wwe i mean they got you know i mean they're listening to the people if you guys listen to the people i mean you you got to make changes and one, you know one of them is is that you got to make new stars you've got to commit to new stars and and you know Miz and Morrison aren't new stars, and Sheamus isn't a new star, and, you know, I mean, that's just the reality. Those guys have been around um, for for a long, long time, and, um, I mean, I know, I mean, look, I know they tried with McIntyre, and I'm not saying that, you know, he's been, you know, anything bad, but they, it's, it's, it's more than that. You know, they need, like, a, they need a shakeup of just, like, the look and the presentation, and and just the way they do things, everything is so patterned, and you got to break the pattern. Um, but but the key is is new stars, and and you know they squandered Riddle. I mean, like Riddle will be around, and Riddle will be ha ha for a long time, but he's never going to draw money at this rate. 
Um, you know, he's going to be a, a slightly higher our truth and that's fine and good to have on the show. That's never going to turn your business around. Um, they squandered Keith Lee. Not that it's like, not that they can't turn it around with him, but as, as long as they don't let him wrestle the style that he gets over with, he will never get over. He will never get over. He will never get over wrestling like he did on Monday night ever. I mean, that there's just nothing, there's nothing there that's going to excite people. Um, and I know he can get over because I've seen it. And, um, uh, you know, that's, that's the situation. So, um, UFC on Saturday, their number was the lowest prelim number, but there's, it, it, um, it's like, like a point one six, I believe, um, which is really low, you know, again, for, for UFC, which usually skews young. Um, some of it was, it's on ESPN2, that doesn't help at all. But, you know, if people want to see it, they're going to, they're going to find it. And, um, and it's not like it wasn't a great card. It was a great card, but people didn't know that ahead of time. Um, but, um, the other thing with the, the UFC, the UFC thing though is they do have this one excuse in that the sense is that they are streaming the same show on ESPN plus and virtually every UFC fan at this point probably has ESPN plus because you need it for the pay-per-views and you need it for most of the weekly shows anyway. So a lot of people are probably watching on ESPN plus rather than ESPN two. So it is, there is an excuse there. But it's still um, not a good number. I mean, I, I don't care. You can make excuses for everything in the world. When you do your record low, which they did as well, um, it's not a good thing. You know, um, you, you know, I mean, there's reasons why, but it's, it's it, you know, it's still a record low. Um, SmackDown was fine. SmackDown was like they were. I think they were down from 0.59 to 0.58 this week. So it's essentially the same. So SmackDown was, was, you know, for what they've been doing, SmackDown did fine. So it's not like WWE is, is dying. It was one bad number, and, and I always think, you know, don't overreact to one bad number, but, you know, losing to AEW at this stage of the game. Um, it's almost, it's so inconceivable when you think about it because one company is probably, you know, 16 times the size of the other, and how do you how do you lose when you're 16 times bigger? But they did. Um, and there's a message from both sides and it's, it's, you know, part of the message is, is that one side's doing it better than the other and the other side that is not doing it better is sitting there, you know, oblivious to the fact that what I just said, even though it's obvious. So, um, they're going to have to, I mean, I mean, one of the key things is they're, they're going to have to wake up and, and, and actually like look at this. And I mean, I, I hate to bring this up, but. I actually did bring it up the other day. I mean, I did. It's not like I didn't tell them, um, you know, exactly what was going to happen because I did. I said this was going to happen to somebody in WWE, top guy in WWE, you know, um, not all that many months ago. Um, I didn't say it would. I, 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 it, it happened. Like I said, it, it actually happened, um, you know, months before I said it, but I did say it would happen. And, and this, the other thing on this too is, is that if WWE does not turn things around, if WWE does not make changes, the one thing I can guarantee is, is that like, um, this will not be a one week thing. It may not happen again during football season, but it will happen again and it will be, you know, a regular thing in time unless WWE turns it around because the, the the reality is is they're they have continually declined for years and years and years and there's no sign that this decline will not continue and AEW is staying the same and actually gaining and when one line goes up and one line goes down and they intersected already um, the future of the one going down and the one going up um, is a gap not a reversal so anyway that's just simple drawing lines on a piece of paper of on trends and where they go and um you know 
that's it's a wake up call for WWE. And 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 uh, you know, from what I understand, look, everyone I know in WWE was stunned, and everyone I know in WWE got the message too. It's just what you do with the message. So, um, you know, I I I don't know. You know, again. It's it's not just uh, there's a, there's a lot of issues at stake, you know, and one of them, I think, also is that I think that what has hurt um, NXT is that before with NXT, you would watch NXT and you would get the guys in NXT that are doing really good or and women and you would get really excited for them to go to Raw or SmackDown and make a difference. And now I think the mentality is is that no one's ever going to make a difference because they're all going to be misused. And so it's like, why bother getting behind anyone in NXT? Because it's either going to be Johnny Gargano, who's never going to leave, no matter how great he is, he's never going to leave because they've already decided that a guy like Johnny Gargano can't be a star on the main roster, even though he's been a star in NXT and having great matches for a long, long time. And Adam Cole's been in NXT forever and been over forever. I mean, really, it's been years. You know, a guy like that should be on the main roster and a star. And they probably decreed that because he doesn't, you know, and, and you know, Brian James said it. You know, it's like, too bad he doesn't look like Karrion Cross. And it's like, I think that that mentality right there is part of the problem. Because as much as Karrion Cross gets pushed and as much work they do on his, on his entrance... The fact is, is that Karrion Cross is not as over as Adam Cole, and but in their minds, Karrion Cross is a potential star, and Adam Cole is an NXT guy, and that in and of itself may be the answer that they're missing. Because if this was AEW, um, it would probably they would probably not go with the mentality that Adam Cole cannot be a star on the main roster. Um, and Karrion Cross may or may not. You know, I'm, this is not a knock on Karrion Cross. It's a knock on the mentality um, that because of this, you know, because he's got size, he can be a star, and because the other guy doesn't have size, he can't be a star. And in 1985, that was correct. But the world has changed completely, and they're behind the times. And they, you know, to be, you know, the generally speaking in business, the market leader is going to be not behind the times because of the fact that WWE has had so many decades of a head start and is is the established brand in that case right now. That's not the case, but that will not last forever. And it probably will not last another year. Um Unless they start getting with the times. And boy, I, I, you know, you know, I mean, one of the things is you watch those finishes on Friday Smackdown on Monday's Raw and and it's like that is not with the times at all. And the people involved are, you know, look, look, I mean, look at the people who are making the decisions. I mean, it's it's like Bruce is, you know, Bruce is a yes man and Bruce is old. You know, he's not a young guy. And that's and and granted. You don't necessarily have to be young, and there have been successful promoters that have been very old, and there have been successful bookers that have been old. It's not an age thing, but it is a dropping out and coming back thing. There's nobody that drops out for 20 years or 15 years or 10 years, loses touch, comes back in, this, and, and all of a sudden is on has just their finger on the pulse when they're old. That will not happen. I mean, it won't. It can't. I've seen it with people much smarter than these guys. Because who is smarter than Watts? And Watts was out for five years. Where, where the, and, and the business changed far less in that five years than in the last five years. And Watts couldn't adapt. And if Watts couldn't adapt as, genius, as much of a genius as he is, these guys that people are talking about from the past, they're not. They're not. They're, they're, none of them are on Watts's level. I mean, I and I, you know, I talked to all of them. You know, all through my life. And and Watts, when it came to um, when it came to this business, Watts was smarter than almost everyone. But nobody, 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 not me, not not Mike Tanay, not anyone that you want to name that's like, um, you know, smart and wrestling. If they go away for five years and come back, I mean, yes, you probably in a couple of years could catch back up. 
But that first year or two, there is no way. There's no way. You couldn't do it. I mean, it's it's and I don't think that these guys who they think time has stood still, it hasn't stood still. And that's the big problem right now on their side. And, um, you know, that's the deal. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.